Hi everybody, uh, I'm Kit and I run this Twitter account um, and I am on the ASNAC Society Committee. I'm a second year at St Catharines uh, and I've been getting a lot of questions recently, some on Twitter, some elsewhere, uh, on what the interview process is like, uh, especially for ASNAC. And um, so I thought I'd record this very last minute video um, just to give some advice and try and answer some of those questions. Um, it's not going to be edited or anything, so I'm a, uh, that, well, that's my first mistake. Uh, I'm sorry if this is a bit messy, um, but I hope it does, uh, make things a little bit clearer. Uh, and while I will be talking mostly about ASNAC, um, I'll also try and keep a little bit of relevance to the other humanities subjects, um, just so you have a little bit of sense, uh, of, of what a Cambridge interview is like. Um, and so, uh, before we start, there are a couple of really important things to stress. Uh, the first is that the interviewer is always on your side. Um, there's lots of myths going around about interviewers trying to trick you. That's just not the case. They are always trying to help you and try to see what you'd like uh, you'd be like to teach. So if you make a mistake, very often your interviewer will try and lead you in the right direction like they would in a class. Um, and so don't be afraid of your interviewers. They, uh, they genuinely are, are trying to help you. They're on your side. Um, I remember in my interview, I panicked for minutes and minutes before I realised, oh, actually, I'm being told the answer here and guided towards it. Um, and I found that a very, very helpful thing to remember. Um, and at least for, for Asnak, all our interviewers are incredibly lovely. Um, the next thing is there's no perfect um, way to go into an interview. I get lots of questions that are asking about what should I research? What should I know to say to these academics? Um, but it's never going to work to explain to someone who's put their life's work into a field, their own research. Uh, they care much more about you coming across as engaged and interested in your own things. Um, and, you know, even if it's something your interviewer knows nothing about, they're here to teach you. And and so really what they want to see is, is, is you invested. Uh, and then the last thing before I go through, through some, some more specific advice um, is that it's okay it's absolutely fine to get things wrong and you don't want to get everything right because if you get everything right, you're going to be boring to teach and um, there's there's not much point in you doing a degree. So don't feel like you need to come in knowing everything, especially for ASNAC where we have an awareness of the fact that you won't have studied anything like this beforehand. Um, so with that in mind, uh, some ASNAC specific points. Uh, I've been in touch with Dr. Brittany Sean, um, who is the Director of Studies for ASNAC at St. Catharines. Uh, and she's passed on a little bit of advice, so it's not just me making things up. Um, so she pointed out to me that she looks for three things. Um, a genuine interest in the subject matter, um, because it's not always an easy course, and you have to be independently invested in the course uh, to want to do it. Um, and it can be a heavy workload. Um, and the, the, the easiest way to do that is if you're genuinely invested in ASNAC, it won't feel nearly as hard as it, as it would otherwise. Um, uh, the second thing she she says is just intellectual curiosity and ability, um, like you would for any degree. And the third thing she says is is teachability. So someone who is curious and flexible in their thinking, who can take aboard new information that they're fed and adjust um, their their preconceptions and, and what they're going into the interview with. Um, so she stresses basically the same things um, I did earlier, uh, but that's important to to note. Um, with ASNAC, you'll have two interviews. Uh, some colleges do two ASNAC-related interviews. Some do one general interview and one ASNAC interview. It will vary um, based on your college, and I'm sure you will have been told by now who your interviewers are going to be, so you can you can work that out. Um, personal statement-wise, that's one of the things you can be asked on. You might have been asked to send in essays. Those are the bits that you can prepare, so you can read through your personal statement and everything that you've said you've read just be able to talk a little bit about it. It doesn't need to be much. Um, and it's also okay to say, I don't know what I think, but here are some ideas I had. You don't need to be sure of every conclusion and you don't need to have liked everything either. Um, so if you've read a book and you hated it, don't pretend to like it, but it's okay to explain why you didn't like it. Uh, and that's just evidence of, of, of critical thought. Um, then you'll get normally a, a prompt, which will be a, uh, a piece of Azanac text that you've never seen before. And you'll be asked to respond to it um, in the short term. Um, 
Uh, it's about thinking on your feet and it's a lot of fun, to be honest, uh, because if you've applied for the course because you're interested in this sort of thing, it's a chance to do some ASNAC um, and, and you get this, this sort of new text and get to experience it um, and, and think about it and think on your feet. Uh, it's really important to stress that there is no right answer. Um, people see them and, and they get really worried that there's something they're supposed to say. No, it's about reacting to something that you're reading for the first time. And there's an awareness of that. And it's okay to ask questions of your interviewer and say to them, I didn't understand this, I didn't understand this. And in some ways that makes you a very good student because it's, you know, no one wants to sit there in the back of a class not understanding anything and, and not saying that they don't understand. You want to inquire and question uh, and, and you know, find out things you don't know. And sometimes that can lead onwards um, to, to more broad discussion. Um, uh, they're not challenges they should leave you wanting to do more um they should leave you engaged in your subject um and honestly they're well this is so easy for me to say but they're a lot of fun if i mean you can be incredibly nervous beforehand and i know i was but once you get in there if you actually engage in them and 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 think about what you're being told to do they're a lot of fun and they're responsive they're just a chance to talk to someone who knows tons about your subject and maybe ask that question you've always wondered about um uh, so you just relax as best you can. I know I couldn't. Um, and try and have a lot of fun with it. Um, be responsive. Be yourself. Don't try and pretend to be someone that you're not. Um, because who you are is going to be a lot more interesting than the ideal of the perfect Cambridge student or whatever. Um, yeah, and feel free to pop me any questions beneath this video. Uh, feel free to ask anything more that you'd like to know. Um, and yeah, just have fun with it. Enjoy it. And don't come into it planning anything. React, see, see what comes um, and, and, and what you're asked. And yeah, enjoy it.